Hallelujah. <clears throat> we want to welcome each and everybody. Hallelujah. Today is going to be amazing. And as we have come in the presence of our Father, what matters a lot is uh, the faith. <clears throat> that we have come along with hallelujah and uh, as long as i know that there's a season for everything the glory of god becomes a manifestation when we get to understand the grace and the amount of grace that we carry are we listening to this people of God? It is understanding the amount of grace that we carry that keeps us going on and on. So listen to me, child of God. I have a, a burning joy inside my heart that as I was coming, the Lord spoke to me and he told me that I am going to bless my people. And the topic of our message today, the power of prayer. Tell neighbor, the power of prayer. Now, when we talk about the power of prayer, It is something so profound that it becomes a reliance to any Christian because there are troubles that we cannot fight and win by ourselves. There are situations that come and those situations we don't have enough to accommodate those situations. Like whenever somebody encounters a sickness it is something that is not supposed to be in your in your body but it comes as an intruder but the amount of prayer that you produce you allow your body to release your mind to release it can become a solution to that problem hallelujah so listen to me child of god i want to remind you that each and every one here today you may have a prayer that you have been making you may have a supplication that you have been making and maybe perhaps god has not answered your prayer it does not mean that that prayer will not be answered because there is power in prayer to neighbor power behind prayer there are a few scriptures here that we are going to share so that it is going to be evident that God has a message for me that God has a message for you and it is something that we are going to depend on as a Christian you must depend on prayer there are journeys you cannot accomplish. There are destinies that cannot be accomplished. But by a word of prayer, God answers prayer. Let's open in the book of Mark. Chapter 11. And we're going to start from verse number 23. Listen to what the Bible says. For assuredly, I said to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. That's what the Bible is reminding us. For assuredly, it is an assurance. 
I say to you, God is speaking to me and you. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now listen to me, child of God. There's something that we need to understand here today. That when we make our prayers, it should be an assurance that comes in advance. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever, God does not consider age. He doesn't mind about the situation around you. He doesn't mind about how big, how giant, how small you are. But the mere fact that you have made a decision to believe that every mountain that you will command to come out, to be moved, and you should not have doubt in you, it will be moved. So listen to me, child of God. What facilitates the power behind prayer is the amount of faith we present before God as a mode of believing. Because anyone can pray. You can have a prayer request. I can have a prayer request. But listen to me, child of God. You can ask yourself a question. This person is saying a prayer. The other person is saying the same prayer. But who of the two is going to receive an answer? The people that have understood the true assurance that comes from God, hallelujah, when he speaks to us and he says, for assuredly, I said to you, who is the Lord speaking to? He's not speaking to mountains. He's not speaking to chairs. He's not speaking to animals. Hallelujah. He's speaking to me and you. That whoever shall cast this mountain, whoever shall speak to that mountain, that be you moved, be you cast, and they will not have doubt in them. Whatever word they will say, it will come to pass. So listen to me, child of God. There is power behind prayer. That's why I normally tell people that don't look at your situation and begin despising yourself. They are people God has lifted. They are people God has made. They are people God has succeeded. They are people God has prospered. It's not because they are too beautiful. It's not because they are two giants. It's not because they are coming from a wealthy family. But let me tell you, child of God, when we continue to pray, prayer can bring about changes. Prayer can move mountains. That's, you know, that's why I'm here today, to let you know that if God is speaking to you, you must hear his word. Sometimes we get so much distracted because when we look at our situations and we'll be like, you know, maybe it will take longer. Let me tell you, child of God, when you say it will take longer, it is a word you are proclaiming. Because where your faith is, that is where your power of attraction will be. If you say in the next two days, I believe something good will happen. Let me tell you, child of God. It is written. And the Lord is speaking to me and you. Don't focus on the mountain. But see how you are going to cast that mountain. You are going to command. You are going to move that mountain. Hallelujah. By a word of prayer. That's why listen to me, child of God. As a Christian, whenever you know that your prayer life has come down, you are now opening doors for the enemy. Because the enemy will look at how much faith are you carrying. That's why when the devil wants to attack you, he will first of all come and make sure that your faith does not make any sense to you. That's what I'm talking about. I remember many years ago, 
I used to pray and I used to tell God, there is a kind of ministry, there's a kind of life, there's a kind of faith I want to carry. But I used to remind him and I used to tell him one day, I will stand before people and testify. Because that is where my faith was. That is where my believing was. Hallelujah. That's where, you know, my power of attraction was. Because there is power in prayer. That's why there are sometimes in your life you need to be angry. And face your situation, face your circumstances, and begin proclaiming and begin declaring in the name of Jesus, you mountain over my life, you mountain in my career, you mountain in my marriage, you mountain in my finances, I cast you out of my way in the name of Jesus. And I believe 100%, this is all gone. Because the amount of prayer exerted with faith on that situation it brings about a blessing it brings about an answered prayer it brings about existence of dimensions there are people you come and ask how did you manage to come this far there are some people who tell you, I don't know how, but I found myself there. And when you ask them, how did you used to live your life before? They will tell you, my sister, my brother, I don't even want to say anything because my life before, it did not even have a description. Because I used to live any day that comes by. I used to count on it and I'm like, Lord, this day has come, but I know it will go. But whenever they went through a circumstance and they reminded themselves that it is all about prayer. There's a time your family cannot help you. There's a time even the people around you, they cannot help you. There's a time even the people that you expect to make a way for you, they will close that door for you. So how are you going to survive as a Christian? The devotion to prayer can make a drastic change, can bring about a drastic change in your life. Sometimes you can even be betrayed. But let me tell you, child of God, the moment you come to realize that it is not all about the people, it is not all about even your situation, but when you step into prayer, Glory to God. Hallelujah. God himself he will hear you from heaven. Because it is even written, whatever we shall ask of the Lord, he will answer. When you seek on that door, it will open. When you knock on that door, it will open. When you seek, you shall find. When you ask, you shall receive. So what is hard for God? So, it is a reminder that let us not joke with the prayer. In the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse number 24, listen what the Bible says. The Bible says, Therefore, I said to you, he continues to confirm this to us. He continues to speak to you. He continues to remind you. Therefore, I said to you, whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them the most devastating moment in a life of a christian is when they begin to pray and they don't apply faith on a prayer that they have been praying. On a prayer that has been made. Because listen to me, child of God. It is like somebody walk, uh, walking and whatever they are saying, they are just murmuring. 
And even the people around them, they don't understand what they are saying. A prayer that does not have a description of faith, it is a prayer that will be unanswered. When you pray, believe that you have already received it. And it will happen. There is no prayer. I remember one time, people used to tell me, man of God, you, you, are, you are so much fasting a lot. It is even better you, you start taking care of your body, you start taking care of yourself, you know, because we are seeing you are losing it all. That is what people can say. But let me tell you, child of God, there's a time I sit down and I'm like, Lord, I remember the time I used to fast and pray. From January to December. And whenever I used to be served the food, I used to eat uh, food that is uh, food that can be served a five years, uh, a five-year-old child. And I could eat and become full. Because my stomach had, had become too tiny. And listen, by then God did not manifest in a supernatural way. But the fact is that I used to pray, I used to fast, I used to trust a God knowing that one day God will remember me. It is a faith that I put as an icing on a cake that I'm seeing the results now. Some people may not understand what I'm talking about, hallelujah, because you have not sat me down to tell you the whole story. You have not sat me down to ask me a couple of questions for me to answer you. But let me tell you, child of God, a Christian who does not have faith, your spiritual life is in danger. A Christian who does not believe your spiritual life is in danger, total danger. Because sometimes even when you have a bad dream, it is going to torment you the whole day. Even when people try to attack you, you are going to be dismayed. When people come and try to, you know, be like critics, speak ill upon your life, speak ill against you. It is something that even will make you stop coming to church. Let me tell you, you are nowhere close to faith. You are nowhere close to believing. Your faith is still having a serious condition of cancer. There are people you come and attack and they will stand and say in the name of Jesus, I don't accept and I don't believe you can overcome me. You devil, it is written. If Jesus overcame you 2,000 years ago, you cannot do nothing to me. Are we communicating? Are we together? There's a time I used to preach to empty chairs and I used to smile. And I told God that it is not all about how many people who are filling those chairs but the few that you have chosen to receive the word and go take it, digest it, that is what makes up a kingdom of God. Are we communicating? So listen to me, child of God. We are in his presence and I want to remind you that there is power in prayer. Ever since I decided to serve God with the whole of my life. I've seen God. 
I have seen God. Listen to me. Before we pray, let's open in the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse number 14. 1 John, chapter 5, verse number 14. Listen to me, child of God. The Bible says, Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, <laughs> my God, he hears us. Prayer is a confidence that we gain, that we obtain, hallelujah. Because listen to me, child of God. You can run to somebody and you tell them about your problems and they will tell you it, will, it shall be well. But you can decide to learn, to, 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 to learn that if God comes on the scene, it becomes different. You know, now, this is the confidence that we have in Him. Who answers prayer is God. Who heals is God. Who delivers is God. So the prayer that you're making, it should be a living confidence that you carry on from time to time. Hallelujah. I'm not speaking to somebody here today. Because listen to me, child of God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I rather walk along with the will of God than the will of man. That's what I'm talking about. That's why you listen to me, child of God. When you trust is so much people, when your trust is so much in the people, you end up getting disappointed. But listen to me, child of God. The confidence that we have in prayer, it is in God. Whenever I pray, I know that man will never answer my prayer. But God in heaven will answer my prayer. He will even give me more than enough than what I asked for. Are we communicating? So listen to me, child of God. I know we have few people here today, but this message is for you. Because there's somebody here, you might be going through a circumstance, and when you look at your left, your right, your front, your back, nothing seems to be like any help. But let me tell you, child of God, when you position yourself and you be like, now, Lord, I want to lift up my confidence in you. See God. Don't see him from afar. There are situations that wherever you go, you always meet a challenge. Because challenges are, are part of our lives. Men of God, prophets, go and ask them. Bishops, go and ask them. Ministers, go and ask them. Fathers, mothers, go and ask them. Challenges are part of life. But listen to me, child of God. What makes us get more closer to God is knowing that the model of prayer that we are lifting as children of God, it should be a sign of confidence that we have in God. Lord, I know it may seem to be dark, but as long as I pray, I am about to see the light of God. That confidence. That's why even sometimes when we are dealing with the spiritual matters, when a person stands before a man of God and you want to drive that demon out of them, if it is a vigorous demon, you must stand with the confidence. Your spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command you out in Jesus' mighty name. Because your confidence is in God. Your prayer is a mode of confidence that brings down strongholds, that brings down miracles, signs and wonders in Jesus' mighty name. That's what I'm talking about. So my brother, my sister, be confident in the Lord. Be confident amidst your situation. You have a stand and say, Lord, I know as long as I'm with you, 
mtapenya as long as i'm with you mtafanikiwa as long as i'm with you i'll see a blessing that's a life we are living as christians our confidence is in god i put all my confidence in you even when they suck you from that job stand confidently and say lord i know as long as you are in heaven there is another opportunity for me any door that closes there's always an open door any way that has been blocked let me tell you child of god when a road that heads to town has been blocked it does not mean that the road that goes to somewhere else has been closed walk with confidence knowing that god him who hears prayer and answers prayer according to his purposes he will bless you there are things as a christian that they should not even worry you how why do you cry the whole day why do you cry the whole night where is your confidence why do you complain the whole day what do you ask god questions the whole day where is your confidence come on child of god where is your confidence where is your confidence there is power in prayer. That's why you must be careful before you pray. Is the prayer you're going to make, does it rhyme with what you want? Is it what you exactly want? Do you make a prayer because somebody else testified and you be like, Lord, I want the same blessing. Come on, child of God. You may not have the same ability to sustain and maintain that same blessing. That's why, be careful. It is even better you shut up until you know that the prayer that you are going to make is the right prayer. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go to verse number 15. We are in the book of First John, chapter 5, verse number 15. Before we pray, listen to this. And if we know that he hears us, <laughs> whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him if we know a pastor may not remind you a prophet may not remind you but it should be your obligation to understand where is your faith and if we know that he hears us before you pray just know that he has already heard your prayer before you even think about closing that door of your prayer room, just know that whatever you are going to mention in prayer, glory to God, he has already heard your prayer. 